Okay, so we're in um, John chapter 19. Uh, our topic is Jesus is the Lamb crucified. Jesus is the Lamb crucified. All right, Mirari, if you can read John chapter 19, verse, uh, verses 1 through 16. Will do. Oh, it took me off. Hold on one sec. Knocked me off. Jesus sentenced to be crucified. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and they slapped him in the face. One, once more, Pilate came out and said to the Jews gathered there, Look. I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. As soon as the chief priest and their officials saw him, they shouted, Crucify! Crucify! But Pilate answered, You take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. The Jewish leaders insisted, we have a law, and according to that law, he must die, because he claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid. He went back inside the palace. Where do you come from? He asked Jesus, but Jesus gave him no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me? Pilate said. Don't you realize I have power either to free you or to crucify you? Jesus answered, you would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free, but the Jewish leaders kept shouting, if you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judge's seat at a place known as the Stone Pavement, which in Aramaic is Gabbatha. It was the day of preparation of the Passover. Over. It was about noon. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews, but they shouted, take him away, take him away, crucify him. Shall I crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priest answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. This wow. is a very tough one, yeah. This is a very tough one, very powerful. Note that it is the time of the Passover and what is about to happen to Jesus, because Jesus is the Passover lamb. You saw everything line up together. Everything come into alignment. God is a date setter and an appointment keeper. He has everything outlined. Everything is happening according to how God has designed and has purposed it to. Everything is on time. Amen. All right. So why did the religious leaders and the people have such hatred for Jesus? The manifestation of God on the earth. Believe. They didn't believe in him. They didn't believe that he was God. They didn't believe in not even his miracles, even though they saw it. You know, and because he proclaimed that he is God. Right. And one of the things we have to learn is that the universal result of the manifested presence of God on earth is always martyrdom. God himself manifested in Jesus was killed, was martyred. The prophets, they killed the prophets. Isaiah was sawed in two. Jeremiah, they hated, they threw him in a, <laughs> in, a, in a pit. All of the prophets, they were rejected. And that's why the church in the book of Acts, they were being persecuted when they started healing the sick and raising the dead. After they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, 
and they started moving in the spirit, God working through them, they were persecuted. The universal result of the manifestation of God on earth is martyrdom, is persecution. And which we see is happening in many uh, places in the earth right now. And the early church, they were persecuted up until about 325 AD. Why? Because the church merged with the state. When you merge with the state, the church ceased from being an organism and having the Holy Spirit uh, leading and guiding and having Jesus as the head of the church to being an organization. And so that's when they started setting up all these rules, these traditions. The Catholic Church came in with the Pope. You're, not, you're no longer um, being led by the Holy Spirit. So what happened? The glory leaves. The anointing leaves. And so the world doesn't need to persecute you because you're a dead church. One of the things you got to realize is the world says, even with the new world order, that's very soon to come in. They're going to have religion there. Oh, they're going to say, yes, one world religion. The world will say, yes, you can have your religion because religion is the opium of the people. But let a man or a woman of God start manifesting the presence of God. In the new world order, you can have any one of your religion, but mm -mm, you can't come and say Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. That's why we are going to be persecuted. And so Jesus, he said, I am the son of God and the world killed him. What reason did the Jews give why Jesus should be crucified? Because he claimed to be the son of God. Very good. Very good. And so they said that was blasphemy. They chose not to believe. Why did Pilate want to set Jesus free? Because he didn't find any, anything, anything to charge him with. Yes, Pilate was a stupid. He, he knew. Mm -hmm. He says, I find nothing wrong with him. He even asked Judas. Jesus in um, John chapter 18, you know, are you the king of the Jews? You know, he says, you are a king then, verse 37, um, John 18. Jesus answered, you say that I'm a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Pilate, mm -hmm. Pilate it says he even got scared. Oh, where is it? The path. You take him and crucify him. Mm. You can't find it, but I'll find it. Where it says he got a little bit scared. Yes, yes. Crucify him. Oh, yes. Verse 8. John chapter 19, verse 8. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid. Mm -hmm. Why would he be afraid? He is Pilate the ruler. And he went back inside the palace. He was trying to get Jesus off. There was a holy fear there. He knew there was something about this man. He tried. He tried to set Jesus free. Jesus came to his own and his own rejected him. <sighs> Who gave Pilate his power and authority over Jesus? God did. Verse 11, Jesus answered, you would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. It's not you. It's the one who handed me over to you. Those, those Jewish religious mm -hmm. leaders. Amen. And why did God give Pilate his authority? Because it, it, this must, that had to have happened. It was there, it had to happen. No other choice. Exactly. 
it was God's will. And mm -hmm. so if we look at things in our country and in the world from God's perspective, we won't feel disappointed. We'll realize that God is in control because God knows what's going to happen. He sets up kings and deposes them. He changes times and seasons. He is the one who is in control. You know, yeah. we like to think that we're in control. It's not us. It's God. Amen. All right. Um, whom did the chief priest claim was their king? Caesar. And that's crazy. <laughs> exactly. They had the king right there. They rejected their king, Jesus. And it's not even a nice guy. It's like he was not a nice man and a and, uh, good Pilate. king. Yes. No, yes. Caesar. Caesar. Oh, yes. yes. He was not a good king. They were always fighting with the Jews. Yeah. And how did they place themselves under Roman rule until the end of the times of the Gentiles? I know that's a lot for you. Because they said they had no king but Caesar, God said, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. You will be under Roman rule until the end of the times of the Gentiles. The Gentiles will rule over you. No, Gentiles is anyone who's not Jewish. And that's what happened to the Jews up till now. The Gentiles are ruling over them because who has to help Israel down there? Who is giving them money and helping them? The Gentile nations, America, Britain, NATO. Remember what happened with the Jews? After Jesus was crucified, you know, the church began. And then in, in 70 CE, this Roman ruler came in and destroyed Jerusalem, burnt the temple, and the Jews were scattered all throughout the earth until 1948. So from 70 CE, until 1948, the Jews were scattered all over the earth. They were, they've been always under Gentile rule because of, this is what they said. They said, we have no king but Caesar. And God said, okay, I'm going to give you. You want your king? That's what happened under Roman rule. Even now, they are under Roman rule until Jesus says the end of the times of the Gentiles. This is when the Antichrist is going to come in and because the third temple is to be built and he's going to go into the third temple and say he is God. Um, let's look at Luke uh, 21. Verse 24 talks about the times of the Gentiles. And we're not going to go into it uh, very deep, but just a little bit. Um, Luke 21, verse 24, it says, it, it, here Jesus was telling uh, the people, what's going to happen in the end times? And, and he said, they will fall by the sword and will be taken as prisoners to all the nations. Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Jesus said that. Wow. They will fall by the sword and will be taken as prisoners to all the nations. That happened in 70 CE. And Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles. Jerusalem is still being trampled on by the Gentiles because what is on the door? What is on Jerusalem? What is what is <laughs> where the temple used to be? Where the God's temple used to be? What the temple that Jesus uh, went into? What's there now on Temple Mount? The Dome of the Rock, a Muslim temple. They show that a lot too on TV whenever you see Israel. Yes. This is where, now, the third temple is going to be built. It's going to be built next to it. Because God said what? Jer Jer <laughs> Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Until the end of the times of the Gentiles, which is pretty soon. Because they said what? We have no king but Caesar. They said it. And that's the time of the 
to the Gentiles. Second Thessalonians verse two tells us that the Antichrist is gonna go into the temple and claim that he is God. I'm just gonna do a little bit of eschatology because it's very deep. Um, and so in second Thessalonians chapter two, the Apostle Paul is speaking to the Thessalonians and he's telling them, listen, there's a rumor going around that is saying that Jesus has already come. It is not true. It cannot happen until the man of lawlessness is exposed. And he says here, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him, we ask you, brothers and sisters, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by the teaching allegedly from us, whether by a prophecy or by word of mouth, or by letter, asserting that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. That's the Antichrist. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. That's a prophecy of the Antichrist right there. And so the Apostle Paul is telling the Thessalonians, listen, don't worry. It's not true. The day of the Lord will not come until the man of sin is revealed. And how are we going to know who he is? One of the prophecies is, is what? going to see him. Everyone is going to see him. And where is he going to go? He's going to go into the... Oh my gosh, I don't remember. It's okay. It says, verse 4, he will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped so that he sets himself up in God's temple proclaiming himself to be God. So there has to be a third temple. And he's going to go in there and he's going to say he is God. So that is one of the signs. When you see the third temple built, which they are working on, there, there's going to be a ceasefire. Right. They're already working on it. Yes, they have the, they have the, everything ready for the third temple. I think we're talking about Jesus. No, no. So we're going to Oh my gosh. Right. It's almost they, Friday. Yes. Um, yeah, I thought you were talking about Jesus that we're all gonna I'm saying that we're everyone is gonna see him when he comes down. But yeah, yeah. Yes. The, the, yes. Okay, I understand what you're saying. So when you were saying that's what I thought. You weren't talking about the Antichrist, you were talking about Jesus. Yes. I, I was talking about Jesus, Jesus, yeah, and you were talking about the Antichrist. Well, we're all we're as Christians, we're all gonna we're 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 gonna know what's happening. I know we 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 need to know so that we're not deceived because the Bible says even the elect, if God didn't come and stop it, even the elect would be deceived. Wow. Yep, because the Antichrist is gonna come good. <laughs> Listen, when Satan comes, Satan doesn't come looking all raggedy. Doesn't he look at he's, exactly. he's probably going to be a good looking man with a lot of power, Speaking. a lot of money. Exactly. Looking good and intelligent. And bringing peace to the world. And we're going to yes. be like, ooh, wow, thank God. You know, that's it. Cause Middle aged man, watch. Yep, and not with horns or a tail or like he's not gonna come like that. He's he's gonna fool so many people, and that's why we have to be alert um in prayer and in the word, like we're doing right now. Exactly, because when when have you ever been duped? There are so many people now being scammed. Mm -hmm. And you would think, oh, my God, these are very intelligent people. But wait till it happens to you. Sometimes you're not paying attention. A friend of mine, this man, this man called up and he texted her and said, this is Pastor so-and-so. I'm in the prayer group. And um, give me the rest of your number because I want to add you to the prayer group. She wasn't even thinking. She just said, okay. 
go ahead. And then he started asking her some more questions. Then it hit her. You know what this man did? Took over her WhatsApp account, started texting, texted me too, and said, you know, he's at the store and he needs to send some people some money, but the money. Oh my gosh. Yes. This is it. When you don't even realize you're deceived because that's how the devil comes. You're not even thinking. Like okay. hackers, hackers on the computer, hackers on the phone will ask, is your name so-and-so? And you respond, yes, and that's it. You're that screwed. Hang oh, up the phone, people. If you don't know the number, I know. I'm hang it up. If you don't know the email and it seems off, that means it is off. Yes. <laughs> Delete. Yes. Come Knowing your name and everything, you think it's somebody mm -hmm. you know. That's scary. It is, yeah. And and things are, I mean, and things are only going to get worse. And people don't realize it, that there's so many things going on right now that is wrong and it's scary because it seems harmless. Or simple, and in reality, it's not. They take your identity, your money. You know, it, it's we're living in really, really scary times. And this is the time for all of us to really stay together in prayer and in the word and preaching the gospel to everyone, to everyone that we can. Exactly. And I've watched shows on Dr. Phil where women <clears throat> have been scammed over hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. They're catfish. You know what catfish is? You know, when somebody yes, acts like Yes. And they claim they're this person and they make this person feel so special and they keep on sending them money. I think it's me. And then the older they are, the more innocent because they think that what they're doing is the right thing and it's not catfished wicked that's why we ought to be careful <clears throat> and so that's how the devil comes oh, oh to meet all your needs and tell you how lovely you are and they love you and everything mm -hmm. yeah, yeah anyway let's move on john, john chapter 19 17 through 27 okay so the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Ara Aramaic is called, oh God, these names, Golgotha. <laughs> <laughs> there they crucified him and with him two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had noticed, prepared, Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but that this man claimed to be king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what have I written? I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lots who will get it. This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled that said, they divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. So this is what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, the disciple took her into his home. 
Wow. To 27, yes, wow. Yes, so this is uh, very, very powerful. Um, so what notice did Pilate have fastened to the cross and why did he do it? The Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Yep. Crazy. Yeah. So even if the Jewish people didn't like it, it was still there. And <laughs> why did why did he do it? Please the Jews. Mm -mm. They, they, they didn't like that. He did it to to how should I put it? The wording, the wording of it, yeah. you're talking about why yeah. he did it. Uh. I think God used him to convict them and says, here you are, you're killing your own king. Yeah. Not the Jews. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That and, is exactly what they, what, what, why he did it. Yes. You didn't want him. You killed your king. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. How poignant is that? You killed your king. And, and so they, they still didn't feel guilty. Because mm -mm. now they're like, they, 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 they're like, uh-uh, don't put that there. Say the one who he claimed to be the king of the Jews. Don't put that. Spala said, listen, I've written it already and it's going to stay. What I've written, I have written. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh my gosh. How was the prophecy fulfilled with the soldiers sharing um, Jesus' clothing? them dividing it yes it's uh david prophesied about this in psalm 22 verse 18 oh no wow yes there are a lot of prophecies all so you the Bible see about jesus yes. they're in the old testament too exactly it jesus is all in the old testament and they yes have, yes in their we spoke song. about this before. Yes. I mean, even back then, they spoke about Jesus is coming. Yes, they had the Psalms. Why should we? Why should we stay near the cross as the women did? That's a good question. Because he's Jesus, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Amen. And I have my cross here. Guys, they near the cross. <laughs> <laughs> because that's where the power is. There you go. Yes, yes. That's where he is. Exactly. That's where the power is. The power is at the cross. It is at the cross. You know that song? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. Da, da, da. But that's where everything happened. That's where our sins were washed away. That's where we, you know, <clears throat> We were empowered. We gotta stay near the cross. Spiritually, we gotta stay near the cross. Sometimes we forget. A lot of churches have lost connection with the head Jesus Christ and are mm -hmm. preaching on other things, prophesying all these things, gotten away from the cross. Preach Christ crucified and risen. If you preach that, you can't go wrong. Stay around that. That's where we have our power. That's where our healing comes from. That's where our deliverance comes from. The cross. Where we lay it down. <laughs> the cross. What did God show you in that vision? Vision yeah. with the cross. And me walking towards it. Towards the heavens. On the cross. It's crazy. It's crazy. I'm walking towards the heavens. On the cross up because it's the path it's the only way yes it yeah. is the way there's a lot of answers in that in that it's vision powerful. it is a very powerful vision you want to get to heaven you want to you know grow with god you gotta go through the cross there's no other way oh my gosh yes that's why we gotta stay near the cross stay near the cross we get up and you know what happened with the cross too we remain humble. Wow. Sometimes we get too pride, proud for our riches. Mm -hmm. It brings us back to the cross. Jesus, God himself, came down here as a human being, went upon the cross and died for us. It helps us to remain humble. It helps us to remain grateful. It's what helps us to remain Christians. 
and to have the fire. Hallelujah. Yes. Very powerful. Preach Christ crucified. When you are witnessing, you got to tell people about the cross. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. John 3, 16. It's all about the cross. It's all about the cross and it's all about Jesus. The problem is we get away from that sometimes and forget. And God has to wheel us back in. And for Jesus. Because if you want. He knocks us over the head and then he. <laughs> yes. We have to walk through the valley. Back through the cross. We have to humble. He's got to humble us and we got to walk through that valley and give us new strength. Knock us on the head a couple of times so that we get it. And hopefully don't look back. Amen. You got to climb that cross. Yes. You cross closer to God, you got to climb that cross. That cross, suffering, pain, rejection. You yeah. got to climb that cross. Yeah. That's where the power is. You want power? You got to stand near the cross, girl. Humbling yourself, submitting yourself to Jesus. Dying to yourself. Oh. Obedience. <laughs> yes. That's where the power is. And yeah. so, the three Marys, they were wise. They stayed near the cross. Very powerful. All right. Um, let's move on. John chapter 19, 28 through 37. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked the sponge in it, put the sponge on a put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant and lifted it to Jesus' lip. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Now was the day of preparation, and the next day was to be a special Sabbath, because the Jewish le leaders did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath. They asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus and then those of the other. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs while they spared him that what? Instead of one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw it has given testimony, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth, and he testifies so that you also may believe. These things happen so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And as, and as another scripture says, they will look on the one they have pierced. Very powerful. Yeah. So what did Jesus mean when he said, it is finished? What did he mean? He took off sin. What he came to do was done. Mm -hmm. What he came to the earth to do, to die for mankind, this, this bitter cup that I must drink, it is done. I have completed it, Father. He gave up his spirit. It was done. Wow. It is finished. Salvation is available for everyone who chooses to receive Jesus. It is finished. It is finished. Matthew 26, Jesus instituted the new covenant right before he died. Matthew chapter 26, verse starting from verse 26. Matthew 26 at the final, at his final Passover. It says, while they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus instituted the new covenant right before he died and said, it is finished. I have instituted the new covenant. 
It is finished. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Why did the Jews not break Jesus' legs? And why because, is it similar? Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Because he was already he was already gone. Yeah, he was already dead. And it was prophesied that um, you know, he was to be the perfect lamb. The perfect lamb. Jesus was the Passover lamb. And remember, when um, God instituted the Passover, he told them, listen, this lamb must be perfect without blemish. And also in Exodus chapter 12, when God was giving uh, the people the requirements for the Passover, how they're supposed to say, how they're supposed to celebrate it, um, Exodus chapter 12, verses uh, 43 it says the Passover restrictions. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, these are the regulations for the Passover. Uh, no foreigner is to eat of it. Da, da, da. Drop down to verse 46. Uh, it must be eaten inside one house. Take none of the meat outside the house. Do not break any of the bones. Do not break any of the bones. Remember, the Passover lamb that was used to deliver the Israelites from Pharaoh. It was a type or a shadow of the oh. Passover lamb who was to come. Yes. Yes. Jesus Christ is our Passover lamb. He is our Passover lamb. In... Um, John chapter 1, verse 29. The Gospel of John chapter 1, verse 29. In Gospel of John chapter 1, verse 29. This is John the Baptist. He said, the next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, a man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Um, verse 32. Then John gave this testimony, John chapter one, verse 32. I saw the spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. And I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man on whom you see the spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. So God had told John the Baptist, John Baptist, listen, the man who you see, the dove comes on from heaven and remain on him. He is the Lamb of God. Amen. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the whole world. That's why he said, it is finished. Wow, what a sacrifice. Amen. That's why we got to stay near the cross. All right. What does Jesus' shed blood and water represent? What do you think it represents? His sacrifice. His sacrifice, right? And, and they pierced his side and water and blood came out. The blood represents his death. The water represents his baptism. That's how when he started uh, uh, ministry. Oh, we won't go further into that. Tonight. And then also... Um, the blood also represents the lamb's blood represents it is the only way that we can get forgiven of our sins. Um, in what scripture is it again? Leviticus. Leviticus chapter uh, I think 19. Leviticus or ch chapter 17. In Leviticus chapter 17 It, it, it means per, it, 
it it makes perfect sense because he shed his blood to take our sins exactly so that we were forgiven exactly that's a part of it too with yeah. repentance people we exactly. gotta repent <laughs> yeah. yes that's it good revelation as leviticus chapter 17 verse 11 god says for the life of a creature is in the blood and I've given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. So the life of an animal is in the blood. And then um, that's why God tells us we are not to eat uh, blood. Let me start from verse 13. Any Israelite or any foreigner residing among you who hunts any animal or bird that may be eaten must, must drain out the blood and cover it with earth because the life of every creature is its blood. That is why I have said to the Israelites, you must not eat the blood of any creature because the life of every creature is its blood. Anyone who eats it must be cut off. Even up to now, God has told us we are not to eat animals or eat blood. We're not to eat blood. I know in some, um, Cultures, they have blood, sausages, all blood, all this. Mm -mm, we're not to eat blood. The, 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 the Puerto Ricans, Marcia. They do that? Oh, really? I, mean, I thought it was done in the Middle East. So I don't yes, know Puerto I do not eat that. It is yes. it is blood. It's, it is blood. I don't know how people can eat that. I. It's but. Ugh. Mm. Yes. Even in the New Testament, God told us we are not to eat blood. We are, we're not to eat blood. Mm -mm. Because what did... Leviticus said the blood of an animal is the life of an animal. The life of a person is in their blood. If that's why when, if you know, if you get shot, if you get hurt and you're bleeding out, they're going to try and stop you because if you bleed out, that's it. That's your life. Mm -hmm. Blood is very precious. That's why God had the, the, the old Testament, you know, the people in the, in the old Testament, they always had to be killing. Um, bulls and 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 sheep and goats to sacrifice for their sins but once and for all jesus christ came and shed his blood we don't it's it's already done it's finished we don't need to sacrifice um goats and sheep anymore because jesus christ has already done it mm -hmm. because the blood of an animal couldn't take away a human being's sin it had to happen every year. The, at the Day of Atonement, the high priest had to go into the most holy place and, and sacrifice for the people. And also, do you know they also sacrifice for the nations? One day I'll, I'll show you that scripture. So the Jewish people was in the earth as a representative for, for God. Because when they sacrificed, they also sacrificed. When that high priest going there once a year, he was also sacrificing for the whole world, for all the nations. That's why God has us as his people to pray for the nations. Because, you know, remember when, um, thank you, Lord Jesus, when I think it was Abraham, when God came down and he said, listen, I got to go down to Solomon Gomorrah and see if it is as bad as I heard. And Abraham started interceding and said, God, if there are 50 righteous people in there, you're going you're gonna to destroy them? God said, no. And he went all the way down to 10. And God says, if there are 10 righteous people, I won't destroy them. You don't know how powerful we as God's people are in a, uh, a city or in a town. We are powerful. God has placed us here to intercede for the nations. Because we have the truth. And that's why we have to stay close to the cross. Yes. Yes. Hebrews 10.22 says, Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission or forgiveness of sins. Amen. Now, um, why did these things happen? Why did all of these things have to happen? They, they, had, they had to. To fulfill scripture. To fulfill what's been said. Man, it had to happen because God promised he was going to redeem mankind from the very beginning after Adam and Eve sinned God said to the serpent 
the offspring of the woman is going to crush your head. And right then and there, when Jesus said it is finished, Jesus crushed Satan's head, defeated Satan at the cross. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Who is the man who saw these things happen and gave testimony to them? Who is this person? Wasn't it his brother? Who is writing? Who's one of the disciples? I know that he mentioned that here. Mm -hmm. And who is writing the gospel? This gospel. Isn't it John? That's <laughs> it. <laughs> Sorry. It's John. Yes, it's him. It's him. See, you know all the answers. Sometimes we just think it's far, but it's right here. <laughs> right there. You know? I'm tired, but not that tired. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Um, why did Jesus have John testify to what he saw? Oh, yes. Verse 35. Verse 35. Oh, he says it? Yeah. Because he knows the truth. Amen. And, and he said, believes. Amen. And he said, the man who saw it has given testimony. Yeah. John speaking about himself. And his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth and he testifies so that you also may believe. Everyone who's written in God's book. Exactly. That is why Jesus had him testify. To what he saw, so that you and I, and whom God calls, will believe the truth. Amen. Amen. All right. Our well, last paragraph. Oh, we're going good with time. All right. John nineteen thirty eight through forty two. Okay. Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now, Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jewish leaders. Wow. Another one. Closet. <laughs> Another one hiding. With Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with the spices and strips of linen. This was in accordance with Jewish burial customs. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb, in which no one had ever been laid, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. So Amen. Now, it's Friday. It's Friday. Everyone is sad, but Sundays are coming. Amen. Amen. Who were Joseph and Nicodemus, and why did they volunteer to bury, to bury Jesus? Joseph was the disciple, and Nicodemus is the guy who got actually asked to become a disciple with him, you know, walk with him. That's the same, the same guy, right? What, Nicodemus was the one who went to see Jesus at nighttime. And um, Jesus told him, you must be born again. Right. So he was also a closeted disciple. So yes. he didn't want, because he was in in the um, the temple. He was a Jewish leader too. Yes. So it's him. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So they're both closet Christians, but they came through in the closet end. Closet Christians. <laughs> that's, that's a good example. <laughs> they did, yeah, there they go denying Jesus, you know. They love Jesus, but they have to deny them because they don't want their heads chopped off. So exactly. it's like, literally, you know. They didn't want to be put out of the temple. No. <laughs> <laughs> but in the end, they came through. And um, jo it was Joseph's um, tomb that he had prepared for himself, but he placed Jesus in there. Nobody had been in that tomb before. You see how God prepares everything. How oh, here it is. How do you see God's sovereignty in Jesus' crucifixion, his death, and his burial? What no one else would do for anyone else. He he did the one thing that we would all be afraid to do for anybody. I mean, people make the comment as, 
oh, that person was so nice. He would have given his shirt off his back. And no, no, no one else could do what God did. No one else would sacrifice what he did. Yeah, God's sovereignty. He put everything in place. Everything happened according to plan. Everything happened according to what was prophesied. Yeah. He is sovereign. He is God. He's in control. And he did it. Why? Because he loves us. Yes. It's a supernatural love. Something we can't understand. Yes. Supernatural. Every, mm -hmm. Everything God does is out of love. And that's why he did it. Thank you, Jesus. He didn't want us lost. Where was Jesus buried? In, in the garden, in a new tomb. Yes. And so they have down there in, um, in Israel, they have a discrepancy. They said they have this place called the garden tomb where they said Jesus was buried. Then you have this church, the Holy Sepulchre Church, where they said that's where Jesus was, was buried. So listen, we know he was buried. We don't argue over that. Most important thing, he ain't dead. He's alive. He's alive. God raised him from the dead and he's alive forevermore. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And so um, do you have anything to add? No, I, I think we shared it all. God is an awesome God. Amen. And Jesus is the lamb, the Passover lamb, which was crucified. Amen. Amen.